Hey guys, Tex here, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanna walk you through the mechanics of executing trades within the TradeStation platform. Uh, there's a lot of really complex ways that you can set up orders and it can be a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm logged into my simulated account here so that we can actually execute some trades and demonstrate that process for you. Um, made a video about this in the past, but I felt like I could remake it better ha after having learned some things. And uh, so I thought I'd share that with you today. So as always, I appreciate you tuning in. Let's roll the intro and get started. All right, guys, so welcome back. So the first thing I want to talk about is I'm not really going to go into details um, as far as how like a tutorial, as far as how you can set up your screen like mine, but I'll just walk you through uh, basically my setup and we're going to be focusing on the execution window over here. So uh, again, we're logged into my simulated account here so we can go ahead and walk through the mechanics and actually execute some trades. Just one thing that I'll mention is when you are using the simulated account in your trading options, sometimes you're gonna get like totally unrealistic fills. So uh, that may not actually work out very great, but we'll, we'll just look at this. So really quickly and easily, like the easiest way to get into a trade is to just just use a market order, right? Just just get in. Um, so for example, here I have my uh, trade. Um, this is the market depth window is what they call it in TradeStation. And you can set your, your quantity here. So let's say I just want to, hey, I just want to buy one contract. And then for the order type, you know, instead of using a limit order where we actually set our price, I'm just going to set this to market. And then we're going to click buy to open. Yeah. Boom, instantly get filled, right? And it looks like we got a, a realistic fill. So um, you can see here that my average price is shown here. I set this up. You can change this if you uh, if you go to settings and then um, under quote bar, there's some settings in there you can change. You can change what information you have up here. This is what I like to see. I like to see what my average price is, what my position is here, so I can see at a glance where I'm at. Now, visually, you can see that represented here on the matrix as well. You can see that this uh, 29.50, where my average price is, is highlighted in blue. And the nice thing about that is that now that I'm in this this trade, right? I've, I've executed a market order. I'm just, hey, I want in right now. Right? That's an easy way to get into the trade right away. The problem with this is that I have no stop attached and I have no profit uh, take profit attached. Uh, so it's, it's fine to be in a trade without a take profit attached, but you should always have some type of a stop attached, right? Because I'm, I'm totally exposed right now. You can see that the trade is actually going against me, right? Um, I got filled at 29.50 and uh, the bid in the ask is already way down here at 27, okay? So if I only wanted to risk a couple bucks on the trade, I'm already past my stop and I didn't have a stop attached when I took the trade. So one thing that I can do is if I executed a trade without a stop attached and I wanted to go ahead and just attach a stop to the trade now, um, I can come in here and change this order type on the market depth window to stop market and then I can type in the price that I want to stop out at. Let's say... I don't want to get stopped out early here for demonstration purposes. So we'll just put this at some really low number. Let's say $25. Okay. So let's say, you know, stop market. If the option contracts drop to $25, I want you to stop me out of the trade and then we'll click on sell to close. And now you can see here on the option chart here that my order is out at my stop market order is sitting out at $25. And you can also see on the matrix here, here's my stop loss order down here. Okay. Now, the nice thing about the matrix, this is a new addition to my execution order, uh, my execution window here, is that I can change this order really quick and easily. Like normally without this matrix, what I'd have to do is come in here and I have to click the cancel button. And then if this isn't on stock market, I'd have to put it back on stock market and then come in here and type in the new price, right? And then click sell to close. That's a lot of clicks. That's a lot of button punches and you know, it's just slow. Well, with the matrix here, you can see my order right here. And if I want to move my stop up, right, let's say the trade is starting to work and I want to move my stop up, maybe I can click and drag and drag it up to a higher price and boom, it instantly canceled the previous order and submits the new one, right? Uh, I can click and drag and drag it back down, right? Or I can just single click right there and it cancels the order altogether. Now, what another way that I could do this, a quicker way that I could submit a stop loss order, like I'm in the trade, but I don't have a stop loss attached, but I want to go ahead and submit a stop loss order. Let's do the same thing. Let's come down here to 25. And you see if I hover over here on the blue side, it's saying buy 
to open. And if I hover over here, it's saying sell to close. Obviously you can't see the close. So if I actually click right here, if I just click with my left mouse button, it's gonna close the position right away, right? Cause I'm, I'm basically selling below the current market price. It's just gonna sell it right away. But I wanna I want to actually um, uh, submit a stop loss order, not a sell order. So instead of just clicking with the left mouse button, I can press and hold the control key on the keyboard and then click that. And now you'll see it has a stop loss order submitted at $25. So we achieved the same thing as we did here by clicking, you know, setting this to stop market and setting our price and all that clicking and typing in one click with just pressing the control key and then clicking right here, we were able to submit our stop loss order. So again, press control, click at the price you want your stop to be at, bam. And then if you wanna change it, you can drag it up and it changes the order instantly, okay? Very quick and easy. Okay, let me move this back down. All right, so we have a stop loss attached. Let's say that I want to also put a take profit order out, right? So maybe I wanna uh, come up here and maybe I wanna sell it, um, I don't know, let's say 33 bucks, right? Order rejected. If I click right there, it's not. It's gonna say order rejected because I have a stop loss order out. And with option contracts, when you're trading options, you can't have a stop loss and a take profit order out at the same time unless it's structured as a bracket order. In other words, where one order gets filled and the other one gets canceled, it's called the OCO order, okay? So I can't have both of those orders out at the same time without structuring it into a bracket. So what we're gonna do is let's come over here and click on cancel all. And this is where we can use this place OCO order. Now we only have one contract. So what we're gonna do is choose this one limit, one stop. But if you had multiple contracts and you wanted to have two take profit orders out and one stop loss order out, you could choose something like two limit and one stop. So let's just do the one limit, one stop for now and then click the three dots. Okay, now here this window pops up and you can see the first one here says limit and it's uh, basically saying 100% of our position and then it's giving us a price offset here. And then the bottom one is stop market, 100% of our position and again a price offset. So if you're already in a position and you want to attach an OCO order, which is basically, you know, again, a bracket order where one order is going to get filled and the other one gets canceled. This is gonna be placed based on whatever the current market price is when you submit it. It's not gonna be based on your cost average, right? So that's something very important to understand. So let me show you what I mean, right? So let's say that, hey, I want to sell this contract if, um, if it trades up by $10. And then um, I also wanna stop out if it trades down by $3, okay? So my take profit order is $10 and my stop market order is $3, right? Nice um, three to one trade there, right? That would be good. However, here's the problem. If I click okay, and then I click on place OCO order, look what happens here, right? My stop market order is down here at 2370, and my take profit order is up here at 3670. The reason being is because those prices are based off the current market price. My average, my fill price is way up here at 2950. Okay, so it's not based off of my fill price. If you submit the bracket order after you're already in a trade, the offset for your stop and your take profit is gonna be based on whatever the current market price is when you submit that order, all right? Something very important to remember. But now we do have a trade that's fully on autopilot. We could walk away from the screen and one of these two orders will get hit and we don't have to do anything. If we get stopped out, it will cancel our take profit order up here or if our take profit order gets hit, gets hit first, it will cancel our stop. And now that our orders are in, we can, again, we can come in and adjust these, right? Here's our stop loss order. We can move this down. Um, obviously not good practice to be widening your stop, but you can move your stop loss. Likewise, you can come up here wherever your take profit is, here it is, and you can move your take profit. So you can make adjustments to your stop loss and your take profit orders without having to cancel anything. You keep the trade fully on autopilot. Um, and just like that, right, we could walk away from the screen. So what I'm gonna do is we have, we have the take profit order out and we have a stop loss order out, right? But let's say, hey, I just want to, I just want out of this thing, man. I, you know, I just want to get out of this thing. Now, of course, we could just cancel all of our orders and then, you know, close out our position using a market order. But the easiest thing to do is just click that close button right here. It's like the panic button. Order. You click close. You can see that it immediately canceled both of those orders we had out and then filled me um, using a market order. 
uh, didn't give me a realistic fill. Fill me way up here when the market's not even up there, but you get what I'm saying, right? That's your panic button. So if you have orders out and you just need to get out, just click the close button. It cancels those orders and immediately sells your position at a mar uh, using a market order. All right, now that we don't have a position, what I want to do is I want to show you how you can attach a stop loss and also how you can attach a take profit order from the very get go, like from the very first second you take a trade. And if you do that, then it's going to be based, the, the offset for your stop and your take profit will be based on your fill price. So the easiest way to do that is to come over here and let's just switch this to limit and we're going to check attach OSO. Okay. Now you have a couple of different options here. If you just want to attach a stop loss to your order, choose exit stop only, and then click the three dots and then set your price offset. So let's say we want to risk three bucks per contract. We would type in three bucks. If it's, if we want to risk 250 per contract, we type in 250. Click okay. And it doesn't matter how many contracts you buy. If you click on two, four, five, whatever the case may be, and you have this check to attach a stop and we'll just put the, let's put this out well below the market so we can see what it looks like. So we'll put it out at 22 bucks, click on buy to open, boom. All right, look at the option chart here. We have our order out to buy five contracts at $22. And then we have that price offset of $2.50 below what our fill price would be, right? So our stop loss is at 19.50. And just like that, we're able to attach a stop loss to our um, our trade before we ever get into the trade. Now let's cancel that. And let's say that we actually want to, uh, let's just do two contracts to keep things simple. And let's say that we want to have a stop loss and a take profit order attached, similar to the way I showed you over here with the OCO. Let's go ahead and click this and we're going to do, um, we'll do the two limit and one stop. So you're going to do two L slash one S and then click the three dots here. And now you can see here, so for half of your position, you're gonna have a price offset for your take profit order and a price offset for your stop loss. So let's say for our first profit target, we wanna sell when the option contract is $6 above our fill price, um, or we wanna stop out when it's $3 below our fill price. And then for our second target, we wanna sell if the option contract is $12 above our fill price. And we also want to have a stop market attached that's three bucks below our, our fill price. Okay. So what this essentially is saying, if we buy two contracts, we're going to be stopped out on both of those contracts. If uh, the option contract drops by $3 from our fill price, or we're going to have one sold at six bucks, in which case this stop market would be canceled if that gets filled. And then if the last one at $12 gets filled, this stop market would be canceled. So we click OK. All right. And we'll just set this again at just some low price so it doesn't fill. We can see it on the chart. We click buy to open and there you go. So here is our our uh, order to buy two contracts at $22. And then we automatically have a stop attached at $19 for both of those contracts. We also have a take profit order for one up here at $28. And we have another one up here at $34. So if we were to get filled at 22 bucks and the trade starts to work and it comes up and it hits our first profit target, we would get filled on our first profit target. And then the stop market order here would be changed from one contract to two contract. It would cancel that other stop market order. And then if we get filled on the last one up here, our last profit target, it would cancel that last stop market order. So as you can see, a great way to automate your trade right from the get go by automatically attaching both stops and profit targets. And let's go ahead and execute this trade. Let's set it. Um, uh, let's set it at the current market price is 27. So we'll see if we can get filled at like 2680. So I got it to fill. Um, you can see that we got filled here at $26.30. You can also see it right here. 26, technically 26.35 is our fill price. Um, and we have a stop market order down at $23.30 for both of the contracts that we bought. And we have a take profit up here at 32.40 and another one at 38.40. So if we scroll down, here's our stop market here, right? And we can, again, we can come in here and we can adjust that if we want to widen it a little bit or we want to tighten it up a little bit, we can make that adjustment and it keeps our take profit orders out in the market. Those never get adjusted, right? Those are still there, but we can adjust the stop here. Um, or let's say that, you know, price starts to move toward our first target, but it looks like it's struggling and maybe we want to move that down a little bit. We can click this and drag it down. You'll see that it has changed our uh, first take profit order. 
Likewise, we can go up to our second take profit order and we can click and drag and move that down, right? So quick and easy, quick and easy. I can make changes to that. And now that once again, the trade is fully on autopilot, but it is based purely on the, the pricing of the option contracts. And this is where it can get a little bit difficult, right? If we are basing our trade ideas off of the underlying instrument, right? I just bought calls here on the S&P 500 because uh, you know, maybe I believe that it's going to go higher. Let's say that um, I'm targeting high of day. So let's say I'm targeting 4460, just to make it easy. Uh, if if I wanted to basically sell my contracts based on the S&P 500 price and not the option price, then we have to do something a little bit different. We have to set up what's uh, what's called an activation rule. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and cancel this, right? So now we, we still have our two contracts that we own here, but we have no stop and no profit target attached. Let's come over here and click on activation rule. And then we're gonna click the three dots. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up both a take profit and we're gonna set up a stop loss order. But we're gonna use the price of the S&P 500 to set our take profit, and then we'll use the price of the option contract to set our stop loss. That way we know exactly what we're risking from the stop loss based only on the price of the option contract. But we don't wanna sell our option contracts until SPX hits our, uh, our price target, which is 4460. So the first thing we're gonna do is check this price right here and let's set our stop first. So what we need to do is type in the option contract that we're actually trading. We are in the uh, SPX 220413 call with the 4420 strikes. We're gonna type in SPXW. Basically you're gonna type in what you see here on the market depth window, right? So SPXW space, the year is 22, the month is April, so 04. The expiration date is 13, it's a call and it is the 4420 strike. And we're gonna click on add. And then the next thing we're gonna type in here is we're gonna type in the uh, the underlying instrument, which is, uh, you can see spx.x. So we're gonna type in dollar sign spx.x, and then we'll click on add. Uh, and then we also wanna make sure that this is or not and because we want one or the other. We don't want both of these conditions to be met in order to uh, to execute this order. We want one of these conditions to be met. Okay, so for our stop loss, first and foremost, so our average price is 26.35. Let's say we're gonna risk uh, like three bucks. So 25, 23.30. So we're gonna say, we're gonna put 23.30 here. You know, I'm gonna set this really low because I don't want it to execute while I'm demonstrating this. So let's just say 20 bucks, okay? So for our option contracts, we need to change this to less than or equal to. So we're saying here, if our option contract is trading less than or equal to $20, and there's just a single trade tick at that price, then I want you to, you know, I want you to sell my option contracts or if the S&P 500 itself is trading greater than or equal to $4,600. So if there's just one trade tick on the S&P 500 itself up here at 46, uh, sorry, not $4,600, $4,460. That's not going to happen today. Um, so we're saying, hey, if the, if the SPX itself, it doesn't matter what the option contracts are trading at, right? That does not matter at all. We're just saying, hey, if the S&P itself trades up to 4460, if there's one print at 4460, I want you to sell these option contracts. Or if our option contracts trade down to $20, I want you to sell it as well. Okay, so one of these conditions has to be met for this order to get executed. So we click OK. And then we want to come over here and change this to, um, let's see, it should be, change this to market order. Oh, I have to uncheck that. There we go. Now we can select market order. So make sure that you don't have attach OSO checked. Uh, we have two contracts. So our quantity is set to two and the order type has to be set to market. Okay. Now that we've, we've set up our activation rule that is checked. We have our quantity set to our full position size and the order type is set to market. We can click on sell to close. Okay. Now it's not going to show you your orders on the chart here, like it did before, but we know for a fact that we had that activation order with the activation rule set. So the beautiful thing about this is because we don't know exactly what the option contracts are going to be worth when the uh, when the underlying instrument hits our profit target, this just automatically just sells it for you, whatever the current market price is, right? It's going to be a profitable trade if it gets up there. 
Um, and that way we don't have to put any thought process or any math into it. It's just we sell exactly at the profit target that we were planning to based on the underlying chart by using this activation rule. So it's really that easy. I mean, you can see that we have the order in there. It's completely on autopilot and either our stop gets hit or our take profit order gets hit that is based on that activation rule. Now, um, now, like I said, the downside is that we can't actually see our orders here and we can't really use the matrix to uh, to make adjustments to our order. So that can be a good thing though. It can keep you from micromanaging the trade, okay? Now, the last thing that I would say is that you can use this activation rule for um, opening a position as well. So let's just go ahead and click cancel and we'll just close the position out. Okay, so we're flat, we have no position. Let's say that, hey, I want to actually um, have this, I, I wanna buy some 4420 calls if SPX actually hits 4420. So let's go back here, activation rules checked. We're gonna click on the three dots and let's, uh, let's get rid of that one. So we're just interested in the underlying in, uh, instrument. We're gonna say less than or equal to 4420. Let's see if we can actually get this filled here. Single trade tick. Okay, so if the S&P 500 trades down to less than or equal to 4420, then I want you to execute this order. So we'll click OK. And now we set our quantity here. Make sure attach OSO is not checked. And make sure this is on market order. And then we click buy to open. Okay, so now we're saying, hey, if SPX trades down to 4420, I want you to buy two of these 4420 calls using a market order. And let's see if we can get this filled here in just a second. And you know what, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna change this just to make sure that we get a fill real quick. Let's just change this to 4422. I think that'll get hit. We'll do 4422.20. Okay, and then buy to open. There we go. Okay, let's see if we get this fill. We're at 4422.32. Damn, there it is, perfect. So you can see, as soon as we got a print on SPX at 44, um, uh, 2220, I think is what we set it at, it immediately submitted a market order to buy two of those 4420 calls. So just like that, you can use the activation rule to get into trades. Now it's not really something that I use personally. Um, I like to I, I like to validate that the trade is still, you know, still what I'm looking for based on price action. But um, it's a great tool if you're trying to watch several things at once. Um, obviously, you can't trade. Uh, several things at one time at the same exact time. So activation rules can be really handy to help you get into trades that way. All right, guys. So uh, hopefully this long drawn out video was useful to you in some regard. If you have any questions or anything, be sure to leave those below. As always, I do appreciate you watching. Take care and we'll see you in the next one.